Yeah. Eric Froelich versus Randy Buehler. Pretty exciting. Six and three in the regular season. Three losses to a stretch, so maybe. So, Randy, of course, that. was a former director of Magic R&D, uh, a pro tour champion. And, uh, you know, his career was short but sweet on the pro tour, really, before he went to work with Watsi. Yeah, he got hired by Wizards of the Coast right away. And Eric, uh, Eric just has a lot of pro tour success. Yeah. You know? and, and both, you know, a long time ago, I think his first pro tour top eight was what, two, yeah, 2002. And uh, he's currently number three in the top 25. So. And he was very close to upping that to number one yeah. last weekend. Yeah, yeah. One match away, probably. I think he top, if he top eight, that he's probably number one. And yeah. you got opening hands. Opening hands. Uh, very similar, Eric drew, actually. Eric to the Lab Maniac, which is not great, I'm guessing. Um, uh, it's probably fine. I mean, it's a reasonable force of will fodder. Like, if you resolve Doomsday, you you always have other ways to win. Right. So they really have kind of like no idea what's going to happen opening hands. It looks like this is going to be a long game. Yeah. Long like game. Both of them land heavy. Both of them have a force of will. Eric has the Vampiric, but that gets countered by the misstep. No one has any power. Like we're just playing completely without power right now. Right. Most they, capital sense. And of course, remember that they have no idea what each other's playing. I mean, the the underground sea gives a lot away. I mean, that, that narrows it down. Well, to neither of them has Doomsday, played Doomsday. In this, neither of them has played Doomsday in the tournament, right? I don't think so. No. Yeah. So Randy played Mirfolk twice and uh, Belcher. And Eric played Shop Stretch, and I don't remember a second deck, but it certainly wasn't that. So we can't quite see what Randy drew that turn. Oh, he drew Lab Maniac. So we've got a <laughs> Lab Maniac parody, Gush parody. Uh, uh, Randy's up a Gush, but that's not really. Oh, he's on Hurricane? Oh. So what do you think about I'm that? Not even Do sure you know, is he just going for Ancestral Recall now? I would, yeah, I wouldn't counter that on Peric, I don't think. Like, it, it, it's pretty likely he's going for Ancestral or Fast Bond. And you have a Force of Will, too. Seems like you can hope to two for one in there. Uh, yeah. Now we're getting the Ancestral, certainly. But, you know, I guess he could worry that he's playing against a Show and Tell deck or something. Like, he doesn't know what he's Vampiricing for, necessarily. Yeah, that's a good point. It's always pretty risky to let that resolve. Of course, now. Drawing the merchant scroll, which is lets him get the thing he was probably vampiric for anyway, is pretty lucky. Um, yeah, this is the kind of game that's hard to analyze because no no player had any. A lot of times these vintage opening hands, you can lock your opponent out or just go for a win really quickly. These were not those hands. I mean, at least Eric found a piece of power now with the ancestral, and it looks like that's going to resolve. And I think he will uh, pitch to that maniac. There's the ancestral. It's force of build with a gush, I assume. Oh, it just resolved. Whoa. Yeah, I guess. <sighs> can you can he win? You probably can win from this. Um. Well, he, he doesn't. Have... No, he he has a he has something to draw cards with the gush, so he can get the uh, lotus and yeah, most will. Also, he... no, that doesn't do it. I. S hmm. I think this should be a win somewhere. I'm you say terrible just, with the card it? Doomsday. I think he wins here. Yeah, I think he he casts Doomsday, Force of Will, uh, the Force of Will. Well, there's a gush, so Eric can gush. Eric can gush and hope for a second Force of Will. Force of Will, or maybe a mental misstep, depending on the pile. But I think that should be a kill for Randy here. Wow! If you, if you resolve Doomsday with the card draw, you usually so, so able. Randy drew a Doomsday for the turn, right? Yes. So it's so. What do you think about him not force of willing ancestral? That I was surprised. I mean, uh, then it then it's played out. Usually really people automate. Yeah, usually people automatically force of will that, but it really worked out here. Also, it probably is the same because Eric force of wills back. I'm sure. But now we have to. Gosh. There we go. And the gush gives him nothing. So yeah, Randy. Oh, he didn't draw it. One so mental gush, miss. 
gushed into mental misstep, which means so you tell me, I've never played a game with Doomsday. Is does that matter? Could Randy get a pile that gets thwarted by mental misstep? Um usually you can play around it. Also it's kind of difficult, I think. Oh, he did Wait, find did another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, there was another uh, card off the screen. Oh, the second card. Like the, the underground sea and the tropical was what uh, he paid the gush for, and then there was a misstep and another card. Oh wow! Yeah, and but that, that was the force we, we could not see, so that and uh, that makes the mental misstep part right. Because and and Eric has chosen to keep the lab maniac. Is it just too hard to win without the lab maniac? Mm, it's not that hard to win, but without right, a fast one, he doesn't want a second gush anyway, I don't think. No, no, but he got rid of the mental misstep with the second force. Oh, ball. sure. I, I don't know about... Once again, having not played this deck, I did not know what the correct... Usually getting, like, Lotus, Jackmosville, and Tendrils. I mean, that that's just... I mean, they are right. already on 15 and 17. Right. You don't really need a high storm count, and... Right, that's a, that's why I would have expected for him to ditch the lab maniac rather than the yeah. mental misstep, just in case. I was a little surprised, but you mean so the yeah, lab so, yeah, so does that do anything? Uh, he can get ancestral. He can duress it's, ancestral. It's not enough lands, I don't think. No, oh, and he doesn't have a doomsday. Yeah, I think you wait one turn. Like if you wait one turn, you can ritual. Yeah, must will. And then you can Empiric Tutor for a fast bond, gush into okay. the fast bond, cast oh, the fast okay. bond, and then you can actually go off. So, yeah, right. I, th I think if Eric, uh, if Randy doesn't find something here, we get Yakmos will, ritual Yakmos will into Vampiric for a fast bond, gush, draw the fast bond, cast the fast bond, and then he goes off. That is pretty amazing that this whole game is now determined by that second draw step being a force of will. I mean, the mental mischief, usually you can play around it, but it's pretty difficult if you don't have any mana. Like, he has right. to Doomsday, and then he gushes into two cards, and that's a Black Lotus, and then usually that's another card draw, but it can't be a gush because he only has one land in play, and all the card drawing stuff costs one mana. Right. It's, with two cards, it's very difficult to play around the mental mischief. No, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. So, Ray. Um, so Randy's preordained in the Thought Seas and Vampire Tutor, so you kind of have to take... Do you, do you, leave, the, you leave them both and put the Thought Seas on top? I do exactly what Randy does there. Keep yeah. both and Thought Seas first, which is super important. Now he gets the Thought Seas to the Atmos Will, which is very, very nice. Uh, and now we might see Laboratory Maniac Beatdown. <laughs> Attack two. Sides. Oh, yeah. There's a blocker right away. Yeah, that's... Anyway, uh, no. You know what will be, uh, what'll be sweet is if uh, we get Lab Maniacs in play, but they refuse to block. But I guess it's to Randy's advantage because his Yawgmoss will is still live or Eric's is gone. So Randy can afford to lose his Lab Maniac. Ooh, there's a fast blunt. If he had that last turn, the game's over. That's. Well, you can't draw perfect every turn. I mean, you can try. What's the, the right card in Randy's hand anyway? I can't see that. Hercules Recall. Hercules Recall. The one main deck recall. Yeah, that's not going to do much. No. So what do you... What do you? This game, it seemed like they didn't... The big choice was not forcible in the Ancestral, which was Just, immediately rewarded because he drew Doomsday. I mean, but it kind of evened out. It didn't right. really matter because if he forced the Ancestral... Eric Force of Will's back. And like the, the Force of Will's just traded in either way. Well, of course, at that point, you have to wonder, would Eric have forced back? <laughs> I'm sh Like, his hand didn't do anything. Yeah. Like he has to draw the three cards. Oh. I don't think that's a choice. And now we... Oh, this is Vampiric. So, I guess he's just going to vamp for another Doomsday, right? Doomsday is a lot worse if you don't have a card draw in your hand. Um, well, yeah, but he's gonna have he's gonna have one extra mana, and uh, I don't. Know. I mean, Yakmos will doesn't do anything, so yeah. And what life think... is he at? Well, he's he's going to eleven now. Eleven? Maybe right. he should have. I don't think you play the lab mania at first. That seems crazy. I mean, but... that doesn't matter that much. Right, it doesn't. Matter. 
Doomsday puts him at five. Oh, he goes, well, he's going to nine. I was just wondering, yeah, he doesn't have green mana, so... I was just wondering if there was some weird spot where you want to be at higher life in case you have to fast bond out, but if you're just going to Doomsday... Well, that's getting Flusterstorm now, which is uh, a bummer for, for Randy. Yeah, that is... Hmm. Surely Eric is Flusterstorming that. Uh, I can't imagine being so greedy as to like try to hope to fluster storm the next thing, that seems... No. Also, like he knows uh, the lab maniac in Randy's hand, so it's very likely that Randy has to say go and then draw a gush next turn. Right. And then the fluster storm blanks already, because there's too much mana for, for Randy. Seems uh, very, very bad play. <laughs> and the losers, yeah, that's pretty sad that the, that the Yakmas was gone. By the way, I would have loved to see... Eric draw Force of Will, and then Randy go to cast the Lab Maniac, and for the Lab Maniac to get Force Willed, and then Randy to just get attacked four times. That would have been the best possible ending of this game. But Ooh. oh, well, that's it, it's not a kill. No, it's, it's not. the next turn kill. But Randy will have to do something, and he doesn't have anything right now. So right. Randy's next draw step very important. Oh, that Fluster Storm was key. Yeah. It's a big draw. Randy can't even draw that much, I don't think. Uh, he could probably draw Force of Will. That would do it. I mean, well, that would do it. But then he might just lose the next turn. Yeah, exactly. Like, Eric is going to put, like, Gush and Ancestral on top of his deck. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. At least two card draws are the first two cards he puts on top. So that's not uh -huh. going to help him that much. Randy's Ancestral Recall is still live, so he could draw that. Well, his Yakmos Will is the game ender right away. If he draws oh. Yakmos Will, game's over. So Ancestral gives him um, lots of combinations of cards he could draw. Uh, Force of Will gives him another draw step. Yakmos Will wins the game. Yakmos Will, yeah, Yakmos Will ends the game, for sure. Um, I'm kind of excited. This. I'm, I... Ancestral might end the game, too. Like if he draws Ancestral and passes the turn, Eric is going to cast a card draw, and then if you respond with Ancestral, I think the game is... Not with Lab Maniac. Oh, they both have Lab <laughs> Yeah, right. They're already in play. That's right. a good point. <laughs> It'll end the game, but for the It will end the game, but yeah, not, not in the, the way I was thinking about it. Yeah, for people just tuning in or whatever, we're playing five ma best three of five matches today. Um, the first three matches are, are set with deck A versus deck A, deck B versus deck B, deck C versus deck C. Matches four and five, they'll choose which decks they're playing if those matches are necessary, um, which is which hopefully they are because the that's a lot more exciting. Yeah, this is the matchup between the third and fourth place finisher of the of the round robin regular season. The loser of this best of five matches is going to be eliminated from the tournament. And the winner gets to play against LSV, and the winner of that advances to the finals against Chris. But yeah. And this is game one, so we are looking at a couple of hours of, uh, of vintage here. That's not going to end fast. Yeah, this is a... This is a cool game, though. Yeah, I mean... No one is doing something stupidly powerful. Both had some counter magic. Oh. But now, yeah. next, Randy's next draw step, do or die, needs to be something. Needs to be a force of will, a card draw maybe, or no, that. That's not yeah, that ends the game. <laughs> the attack. I like the attack here. Now we're on the backup plan of uh, Eric misclicking Doomsday, which there's always a 5% chance, probably. Yeah. Can't be more than that. Yep, that's a gush. He would just draw a gush and ancestral, I assume. Like that's what I would probably put on top of. Uh. He gushes into duress oh. tendrils. All oh, right, because Randy's so oh. low. 
But Randy's so low, he just kills him with the... Why wouldn't you put another gush on top? I guess it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Maybe he's out of gush? Oh no, you get your... You get no, your... no, yeah, you yeah, get to shuffle them back in. Yeah, but no, yeah, no. this is obviously game over. Oh. Yeah. So that's game one. Uh, I yeah. wouldn't say anyone got outplayed there. It was just uh, kind of how the cards came out. Yeah. Those, it's the best they could do, but it's, it, it was pretty much the Fluster Storm that Eric drew two turns ago, I think. Yeah. Otherwise, Randy, Randy's Doomsday would have won the game, but the way it was, it was counterspelled, and then right. Eric's Doomsday won. So we do not have those lists, but I don't know if we have sideboards we can look at or not. Uh, uh, I don't think we have deck lists, no. Oh, you can. I think we can see them, but the stream can't. So maybe. I, I, I don't think they're going to sideboard all that much. Like usually, the sideboard is filled with like hate for for workshops right. and dredge and all that junk. Right. I mean, they they're probably having like one or two more discard spells. If they don't have four mental missteps in the main deck, they will have the the force copy in the sideboard. But that's probably it. I mean. So yeah. Sounds like Eric has three mind break traps. What do you think about those in the matchup? I don't think you sideboard them in. Like they only do something in the doomsday turn after the doomsday resolved, but right. it's very easy to play around the counter spell. Right, well, unless you think that the games are attrition wars where, you, where even a four mana counter spell is better than no. some other weird card in your deck. Like I'd rather have mind break trap than Hercules Recall. Yeah, sure, but He's they, 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 no, no, yeah. They only have like one or two bad cards in ZX, and right. they will have something to board in. And that's right. So Randy's got a fluster storm, which will come in for Perkle's recall. Um, no extra dresses or anything. Sounds like I'm trying well, to find a, an old deck list. So we're basically going to see these. Are, but... Same decks here with 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 no chance of drawing a dead card. I mean, can you get really, can you get really greedy and sideboard out of land in this matchup? If, if you get super lucky, I guess Hercules Recall can do something, just by like, returning your own moxes and then casting them for storm count for ten. That, can, that only has two moxes though, right? But, yeah, yeah, they only have two moxes, so not really. Right, yeah, so, I, like, I, I don't think they sideboard much. Right. Decks are going to be identical. So Randy's on the play. Efro has just a mox jet for mana, but his hand is really good, kind of otherwise, but I don't think he can keep. Randy looks like has two mental missteps, a time walk, and a preordain, and three mana, so... Can you keep that? You can Randy's keep Randy's hand or, or Eric's? Eric's hand? I don't think you can keep can, Eric's like, you you go Jet Dark Ritual Doomsday, put a Black Lotus on top. And the next turn you go Black Lotus Yakmosville, you can probably kill them from that. Uh, tendrils in, with tendrils in your hand. I mean Yeah, what if your Dark Ritual gets mental misstep though? And the game just ends. Then yeah, then then you are done. And Randy kept his seven card opening hand. That, that's actually a pretty good hand. Yeah. Two Do mental like missteps. Do you now is there a strategic time walk here? You'd rather preordain turn one than time walk? I think I prefer to preordain, yeah. And time walk on the second turn, and then you can gush on your third turn. Right. Yeah, I don't know what the what better. the critical reason for I guess because you have a mox jet, if you preordain into a duress or thought siege, you can cast it this turn. Or if you had a mock sapphire, maybe you would time walk instead. I don't know. Or I guess you would just play the sapphire to preordain. You wouldn't have. So, Eric six card hand is actually really, really good. good too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because really super tendrils keeps coming back, which is super annoying. Like it's not it's not blue, so you can't pitch it to force will. Like that that's just actually a, a dead card. Just quite unfortunate. <laughs> After a mulligan. But yeah, I don't think you can do anything fancy here with the uh, Doomsday. He just needs to cast Preordain and set up for more. Yeah, now his only other blue card is the misstep. Yeah. Well, he missteps back, and Randy has another. That, that's very good for Randy, actually. Yeah. So now you can go land, time walk, next turn, gush. Refill his hand a little bit. 
<laughs> but now he can, you know, he's definitely at danger of oh, losing oh, the house as well. He did let that resolve. I guess he just values his missteps really highly because uh, Eric has both sorties and duress. Right. There's and, a young as well. Oh, he drew the young as well. Oh, I guess he preordained, so that makes it easier. But uh, did you uh, cast that this turn? I think you do that next turn. So Randy. Wow. Randy has a kill. Oh, Randy has a kill. Oh, these That's draws cool. have been so crazy. They've been drawing. <laughs> every turn we're like, oh, you yeah. do the Yog Mushrooms, we can just win next turn. Oh, Randy drew the Doomsday, so we can just win this turn. Yeah. And, and this is the big part where um, if he had not, if Eric had not mental misstepped, he would have a blue card here. Or oh, if the stupid tendrils was just like a second lap maniac or something, right. then uh, he also be able to do something. But now th that's like a very easy kill. Like he even has one spare mana. Yeah. I mean, obviously he doesn't have force of will protection, but I think he has to go for it. Yeah, I mean, if, if Randy can't win easily from here, then he should not have played a Doomsday deck. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> this seems like the trivial Doomsday draw. Yeah. Like you just get Lotus Ancestral. Whatever. But I think Eric will hold out really for this fight. I think you can probably make like 10 different piles with Doomsday now. So, if, if, you, if you have a spare mana, then it's not very difficult to win. I see in the chat they're saying that uh, Doomsday is a more reliable version of Blue Belcher because it can play the control well, the control role as well. I think people underestimate how, how, I think we've talked about this before, but the Blue Belcher deck can actually play some weird long games against decks that can't destroy the Talarian Academy. Um, well, the Belcher deck also can win before the other guy actually deploys their, uh, their hate cards, right. which is super big in a lot of matchups. Yeah. Like, a lot of decks have only, four, like, when I played against Menendian's deck, he had so many good cards against me, but card I only really cared about was Force of Will. Right. I mean, I, I just had to win super quick, and I mean, it's kind of nice if only four cards in your opponent's deck intact with you. <laughs> yeah. Which Doomsday, I mean, Doomsday Goldfish is turn 2.5, maybe. Maybe more towards turn 3. If you have only two Moxes and the Lotus, that's not much. Right. Yeah, and but you I, generally yeah. you need two lands in play, because usually you uh, need Gush as a card drawing spell after you cast Doomsday. Oh. Like the real problem for Doomsday is Mental Misstep, I think. Like all these fast bond decks would be so much better if Mental Misstep didn't exist. But as your fast bond doesn't really resolve all that often, that makes life uh, quite tough. Yeah, Misstep's a, a card. I, I mean, I think mis Misstep makes deck building a lot less interesting because it just chews up room in everyone's decks. Yeah. Um, but it does seem like it keeps some annoying stuff in check. And then classic deck, oh, vintage deck building is already pretty limited anyway. Right, right. And if you have so, if so few slots, although that is less true than it used to be. Yeah, like, it's not oh, as bad. You know, people aren't playing, you know, not every deck plays uh, Mystical Tutor, not every deck plays Tinker. Like, these decks don't have as many restricted cards as they used to. So it used yeah, to be. Even like, then, I mean. If you're playing any of the blue decks, like also sideboarding, like you always need like what eight cards for workshops, and then you need right. like, like five cards for dredge. The workshop like, and dredge effects on the sideboard is is definitely annoying. You have a lot less room. So yeah, we're already down to zero cards in library. So that maniac into Gitaxian probe with forcible protection, yeah. and good game. So we are at 1-1 one, one in the first match. Yeah, well executed uh, combo there from Randy. So we're going to game three. Uh, I don't feel like being on the play is a huge advantage in this matchup because of the mental missteps. Um, I don't know. Do you think it is? I don't think so, no. Like, actually drawing is a card. Is, I mean, your opponent can't blow you away in this matchup. It just doesn't happen. Like, there's right. no turn one kills or anything. Like, no one is going to have an overwhelming board position on, on turn one. Right. So it, it, it might actually be better to draw first in this matchup. I don't know. Ah, I mean, that would be like, bold. I don't think we're going to see that. Going first and mulliganing against 
like th this kind of deck that can turn one sword sees you is just so miserable. Yeah, like that, yeah. that was Eric's problem. Like he mulliganed and then had the tendrils in his hand and got, and there was a dress or something. It's just right. no, like there wasn't a dress, but there was two mental missteps. It's just so miserable if you were falling behind on cards. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a big advantage. This is this matchup does play very attritiony. Oh, divining top! I hate it. Divining top. So is that a cyborg? Oh no, is that's probably. Oh, that's, that's his main. Card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I forgot how important it is to have a card drawing. That that's really good hands for both players. Yeah, but once again, it's hands where we it's gonna be you know we don't know who's winning, which is great. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of cantrips and resolved duress, or I guess not mental misstep duress. But... So if you're Eric here, do you lead with duress just in case, since you don't have a force of will and you don't have a mental misstep? You kind of have to, right? Ah, uh, nothing that bad can happen on turn one usually. Like for turn one kill. Some really crazy stuff has to happen. Okay. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, but even like in C, he can't even stop in such a recall. But no, he t but he agrees with you. It doesn't. I guess he can ponder into misstep or force of will potentially. It's a fast bond, I think, in a sense, or in the in the ponder. I mean, that's the only green cards I have, right? Yeah, it's fast bond. Fast turn, like. If, if Randy doesn't draw a discard spell, I mean, Randy's first turn is going to be great with two cantrips. But, like, yeah. if he doesn't find anything special, then his Eric's second turn is going to be Duress, Fast Bond, Gush, and then Divining Top. So that, that, that's theory? like. Mm, the Tendrils. That that's the ten is? From what edition is that even? It kind of depends. Like, Randy really wants to find mental missteps here. Yeah, he already has to... one, but he really would want another one. Yeah, or a discard spell or a force of will. Yeah, Randy's in trouble, I guess. I guess he's got another I mean, he's Yeah, he's he's seen quite a few cards before. Oh, there's Foster a flash stone. That's... Also, that's not countering the fast one. No. So he might mental misstep the duress, and then the fast one is going to stick. Not going to be happy about that. I hope Randy yeah. doesn't. Uh, Eric shouldn't play the tropical. He should lead with the dress before playing a land. I think. Just no reason. Yeah, he does it. Like, no reason to show your opponent that you have green mana. I probably would have played the land. Yeah, that gets that gets misstepped, and now the fast one is resolving, which is obviously very very good for Eric. Oh, he's misstepping back. That's fine. That gets Fluster yep. Storm, I guess. So I, I'm not even sure if I have Fluster Storm here. Also, I guess the Fluster Storm gets dressed. Like, Fluster Storm yeah. seems so great at countering Doomsday. And I mean, that's what has decided every game so far someone resolving a Doomsday. Wow, Fast Bond is such a threat. Oh, yeah. A one mana threat of this magnitude. Like, if, if he finds another, gosh. I mean, like, if he finds his, his, um, his tendrils, it's game over. I mean, there must be already five spells in the stack. I think. You've been bad mouthing the tendrils the whole match. Well, it's pretty good right now. <laughs> oh man, I think I'm out for commentary for match three, and I'm kind of looking forward to match three. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking well, I mean, when, this ends, when this ends, I have to watch Belcher versus Shops. You're doing the workshops, the workshops uh, match. That's uh, your specialty. All right. So is. Uh... Oh. Whoa, 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 that's turn two kill. That's game over right yeah, away. That's the game. Black Lotus <laughs> Doomsday. Game and match. Yeah. Wow. It's uh, uh, two good cards to draw, I was the gosh. So, unless Black Eric Lotus does something uh, embarrassing here, he's going to go up one match to zero. He knows that this is resolving because um, if Randy had a force of will, he would have forced to build the fast bond. Right. Absolutely. You, you don't let fast bond resolve in this matchup. Way too dirty. That that's a very easy tendril skill now. Yeah. Bam. That is a quite fast kill. I mean, Randy had what mental misstep and fluster storm. Yeah, I mean that was that's <laughs> that was uh. Yeah, but their open hand seemed good, but not. It's not. It's a turn two kill. It's not a turn one kill. Someone in the chat is just saying turn one. It's it's right. it's actually turn two. Uh, Eric's turn one was just land ponder. 
Yeah, and it's, it's got to be frustrating for Randy because, you know, he, he ends the game holding Preordain and Emergent Scroll, both of which could fetch it cards that would get him out of this, but just no time. And he drew a mox. He drew a Randy, mox. Yeah, Randy's hand looked both good and resilient. But, yeah. I mean, Eric had to dress and a mental misstep, and then just turn two killed him through, through his counter spells. Mm. Shields were up, but they weren't good enough. And now again, there's, uh, I don't know, probably 20 different, different piles that, that uh, are winning the game for Eric. Yeah. I would assume he's just ten, uh, getting tendrils. But yeah. Other than misfits, there's not much hope. Yeah, you just put Gush and Yagmas will on top, and that's the game, right? So Eric is up a match, and then he's getting to play shops against Belcher. <laughs> so um, they are going to randomly determine who plays first next match. It has nothing to do with who won this match. Um, which means that if Randy loses the role in the Belcher match, he's essentially I mean, just an enormous underdog game. Yeah, like in this in this matchup in the Doomsday Mirror, I actually don't think the die roll is super important, but in the Blue Belcher against Shops, it's insane. Right. Like also when when I was playing um, Belcher against um, the Mentor Control deck, it's just insane. The, 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 the die roll just decides half the match. Yeah. Like if he gets to play a, if the Mentor deck gets to play a land, so they can use Flusterstorm and Pyroblast, just such a gigantic difference. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's even it's even worse for shops. I mean, right? Like, as, as this, how many disruption does Eric have? Like, probably ten, I guess. Because there's going to be four Sphere of Resistance and three Stone of Amethyst, and then there's going to be what's that thing called that's restricted? The three casting cost artifact? Trinisphere. Trinisphere. I always forget that name. Yeah, that's going to be there. So that's eight. Chalice of the Void. Chalices. Yeah, that's. Oh, the chalice. What, what, do you, what are you even putting chalice on? Is it zero or one? Zero. 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 Just zero. I mean, it really comes down to it, it's a little bit better because he has less spheres, he has less of everything, and no null rods. So it's more winnable than against some shop stacks, but it's still yeah. pretty bad. And, and you got to remember that obviously Eric can, you know, Mulligan because he knows he doesn't need any threats in his opening hand. He just needs well, disruption. So he doesn't. He doesn't know that for game one. Oh, that's a good point. He does not know that for game one. Very. That's a very good point. Bam. All right. So Air so goes up one zero. And uh, didn't see a ton of interesting choices that match. Um, I mean, that's how it is often. I mean. In Vintage, there's quite a few games where actually only one player plays. Yeah. I mean, in, in this match, at least, there was a lot of interaction. In the, in the next match, there's going to be only one player playing. Like, either Randy is going to cast his whole hand and win, or he's just not going to cast a single spell the whole game. Yeah. That's unfortunately also Vintage. That's the part I'm not a huge fan of. But still, like, the thing is, there's still lots of really difficult decisions, for, mainly for Randy, I think, in the next match. Oh yeah, well, I mean, just, I, I think that the Mulligan some, decision is so rough with that Belcher deck. Mulligan decisions are very difficult. The Belcher deck, um, the shop deck in this in this matchup in particular is is not that hard to play. But in other matchups, just a lot of sequencing decisions with the shop decks. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Like we saw Eric make some really good plays. Like um, in uh, in one game, he played I think a Chalice for zero when he knew that his opponent only had like two Moxes and a Black Lotus on his deck. And it was crucial that he played that Chalice for zero. It was so important, and it was like definitely the right thing to do, but like, I don't think I would have done it. I would have just waited next turn to cast it for one. He was playing against uh, uh, a Mentor deck, and that deck has so many one casting cost cantrips. But like, he just had, like, the only way he was going to realistically lose that game was when he placed Chalice for zero that turn. And Shoot, he did. that wasn't my match against Steve? I saw that it was Eric. Oh, maybe you're right, because I was, I was playing Merfolk. I did the same thing against Steve with Merfolk. He was playing he was playing Mentor, and I and I knew he only had the two Moxes and Lotus, and I played a Chalice on zero. But but Eric might have done it too. I just don't remember. I just don't remember it. 
Like it was definitely against Steve, but that doesn't mean anything because Steve played the same deck the whole right, right. whole nine weeks. So. But yeah, but I did something. I did the same thing against Steve. I got to a point where I thought the only way he could beat me is if he drew a Mox or Lotus. So even though he only had three spells, but uh, and now someone in the chat is saying it was Efro against Rich. So they, I don't know how similar the situations were. That could be. Yeah. Like Rich uh, was a huge upset to play Oles in the last round. Yeah. Like I talked to Lewis was playing him in the last set, and we talked about uh, the decks we expected, and we were both certain that uh, Rich would be playing a similar deck again. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just good to mix it up. Like you really don't want to do that. I mean, it's like, if if you have like a favorite deck and you play twice, like Randy, that's fine. But you really don't want to, like you don't want to allow your opponents to just lock you in on the deck. Yeah, I mean, in season one when I went three and zero with the. Uh... You know, with the weird shop stack with Terra Nova. I mean, the things people did to me in rounds four or six were insane. Like, yeah. <laughs> there, there was main deck hate, right? I, I, yeah, yeah. There, there was a uh, Sabo's web. <laughs> Sa Sabo's yeah. web. I, I, didn't Steve have main deck um, Ancient Grudge too, I think? Uh, may, I yes, I think he did. And, so I, and I played against Back to Basics. <laughs> I mean, like, if you paint yourself a target on your head. Right, right. And I think that, I think that my, my weeks four through six kind of set the tone for the league where you couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, it only makes sense. Yeah. All right. All right. So, now, shops against Delsha. Do we see who won the coin toss? Because that I think is... I think we're both labeled as Chris Bullock. Okay. So if, Re if Eric won the coin toss, the game's over already. Like, if Eric goes first with that hand, that's it. If there's going to be a Stone of Amethyst and... Uh, and the chalice. Do we know who won the roll? I didn't see. Um. Randy's hand is not good. He can't actually cast anything. No, he can't. He has to. He, he has to, like. He, I mean, that's not a keep. I don't think. Uh, Ellis Luis is saying that Randy won the roll. So. There's hope, but he has to that, mulligan that. That means, we're gonna, that means we might get a match. Yeah, he has no castable spells. I mean, he can think... cast probe, and if he hits like a blue mox, his hand is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, okay. actually, if he hits any mox, like if he hits, let's go hits, for it. If he oh, hits yeah, any let's... mana source with a probe, his hand is very, very good. But yeah, yeah, I don't think he can do that. And that hand is great, actually. Yes. That wow, also, that that, that's good enough to play around the stuff that Eric has, actually. He's one mana short, though, right? Well, he can't do that much, but he can cast Tezzeret next turn, and uh, Eric can't do anything about that. All right, so here's, here's something interesting. He doesn't know... There's no reason to actually put the Academy in play on turn one, right? No, no, no. You just go Mox, Mox, Expedition Map, Mox Opal, and pass the turn. Right. I think. I mean, that's what I would do with that hand. Right. And then right. activate at the end of turn. Like, you, you don't want to give your opponent uh, a turn to strip mine away from right, right, right. your academy. That's just miserable. I'm assuming that Randy's playing the spirit guide version, at least some spirit guides. I know he really liked your. I mean, it's it's only two spirit guides. It doesn't. Like, it, it, huh? I think it adds a bit stability because so often you're just craving for that one more mana oh, turn one. Absolutely. I came very close to adding a volcanic island to the deck when I was playing it. Like you just the biggest problem is you just can't cast a spell in your open hand. Yeah, yeah. So it's the biggest problem by far. But yeah, like this is already this is showing very well how important the dial is because if Eric goes first, the game is over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not resolving a single spell. Right. If Eric goes first, it's 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 yeah, it's one hundred to zero. There's no, there's no opportunity. So, so does he activate? I don't think he activates. No, there's no reason to activate. Because you don't want to lose yeah. it to a uh, time twister, like no matter what the matchup is, right? Oh, we're in Eric's start, so yeah, no activation. Right. There's no stifles in vintage, so. The Forge Master. I've thought about playing stifle. I mean, it's so kind of nice. So in some Eric sense. has to. I think what Eric needs to do here is this is kind of tricky. What? He can't play a Lodestone Golem. Oh, it's probably just Sorn and Chalice Zero, right? I mean, the Chalice uh, Zero doesn't do much because obviously Randy already played all this stuff, but you still could, do it, I think. He could play 
Chalice on zero and Tanglewire? Oh, he does play Tanglewire. Hmm. It's, it's not... I mean, his other option was to play Chalice on zero and Chalice on one. Um, or Thorn and Chalice on zero. Like, the, he has... I'm really not sure. We'd have to work out what the best oh. decision. Yeah. Well, the, the problem now is that his workshop is getting tapped on his next turn, which is really annoying. Yes. But that, there's no, no way around play, it. He so. can still play a thorn in his next turn, so that's fine. Yeah. And this is also why I'm not a big fan of Mind's Desire. I think that's what Randy has in his deck, right? Oh, that's Mind's Desire, yeah. Yeah, like Mind's Desire just has such a high setup cost. Yeah, I, I did not play Mind's Desire, but I played, uh, I played the... Uh, Memory Jar, which you did not play, which I really liked. Yeah. Well, I needed to cut something. Yeah. And you can't cut any of the good mana cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That doesn't happen. Yeah, your deck had have, have fewer threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was So here's interesting. So Randy has to decide if he wants to cast Puritan here and open up his academy. I don't think he can. Mm, I think I would probably do it. Yeah? Uh, it's like, you need to do something. Like, every turn, uh, Eric is going to add more disruption to the board, right? Yeah, I think you have to gamble that he can't this turn, maybe? I, I don't know. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe you just have to go for it. Because now you're no. always just getting... He has to do it now, at least. Like, he needs yeah, to... now, now you have to do it, because you can't... Now the workshop... Ah, this, is, this, is, this is still hard. But, I mean, he did mulligan, and the sand was only okay. Yeah. Yeah, but he had a great mulligan. Really yeah. good mulligan. You have to cast the Priya then now, right? I yes, I think so. No, oh, he's still not willing to do it. Yeah, wow. I mean, this, this is going to be a lodestone go uh, golem now, and it's getting it's just getting worse every turn. Wow, what a huge... Just the threat of Wasteland. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's... Probably game over now. I mean, I don't think Randy's getting out of this. Yeah, I think uh, you were probably right. You probably just had to go for it the first turn. I, I think the battleship deck is just, you just have to take risks. I mean, if they have it all, like, yeah. You, you're not going to beat the, the workshop chalice wasteland door. I mean, wow, he still didn't cast Still it? doesn't want to cast anything. I don't understand. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Yeah, now I don't see. Like it was also a song, right? That's non-artifact spells. So if if he preordained into like more artifact mana, he could have cast it the turn before. And right. now there's a wasteland. Pfft. Yeah, that's game. That has to be game over. Like the second load song golem now with a wasteland in play. I think you play. Yeah, you have to play the wasteland too. No, you really? I wouldn't have tapped that. I mean, I guess the Candelabra is yeah, its kind of unlikely, I suppose. Yeah, this is... This was Randy's chance to steal a game from shops, and I understand why he played it that way, and... But it's not working out. Like, um... Uh... I tested a bit against, I mean, not against Jobs, but I mean, Steve's deck was somewhat similar. He also had like null rods and stuff. And like, I came to the conclusion that I have to win turn one. Wow. Like, I, like, I don't know if you saw the one game where I went like turn one, actually uh, used the pact without knowing that I could cast for it. Yeah, I, I saw. I, 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 like, I did cast for it. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just you have to take these risks. Yeah. Like that, that's how the deck works. If you're not willing oh, to take these here. risks. Well, I mean, this is, this doesn't even matter. Like, a chalice for one also does it, I think. Like two loads and golems and a sawn in play. And uh, chalice on zero already, so he can't cast any more moxes. Well, he can just draw Belcher, right? Oh no, he's one mana short. Oh. Belcher calls six. Oh, he can, no, loads and golem doesn't stop Belcher. Oh, it's not artifact spells. He can just draw a char Belcher and win right here. Oh. Because he's a spirit guy. I'm bold. Hmm. So he has to. Can he cast? Tezzeret costs way too much. 
he can does it wait tetris costs what eight seven eight eight so you can cast tetherit four then five, you can untap seven. two and cast time world but that's too late already then yeah, it's too late um he, yeah he's still if he drew belcher there he would have won wait yeah he should have what was is he reasonably doing? close even like if he if he cast the time vault first then he has five yeah, why, why didn't he cast time vault first it, 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 it just doesn't work out then he has five from the academy and one left so with the spirit guide seven left and he needs yeah, eight but to he cast. oh yeah he can't he can't play voltaic key because it's just yeah, he, he, he was one mana off uh casting time vault and then tether and untapping the time vault that would have been he, real like I'm sh like if he cast that preordain early on and risk the academy. Oh, he would have won. Maybe. Five. Man, he would have lost his academy maybe before. Mm, he he might have assembled all this stuff before all this happened, but I don't think there's anything he can do now, right? Mm. Well, he can play time vault, but that doesn't do anything. Yeah, can, there's nothing he can do here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, if he had drawn Belcher, he would have won. That Tinker, Tinker probably too, right? I think he had enough mana for that. This, did he forget about Chalice on one? Yeah, Apparently. he just forgot about Chalice on one. Well, I, yeah, I, but that doesn't matter at this point anyway. Though. Right, right. I have found that Chalice of the Void is extremely difficult to remember, regardless of whose side of the table it's on. I, I found it one of the most challenging magic cards to not lose track of. I don't know why. It's, it just does not trigger intuition for me at all. Um, yeah, I just find myself casting spells into it, you know, but yeah, once, so once what every... Has, what Renny has to do now is he has to side put in more spirit guides and hope for, like, a turn one kill, basically. So hope, let's, let's find out what's in Randy's sideboard, if we can. I mean, I, I, like, it's going to be a couple of workshops, maybe some blue ley lines, and more spirit guides, I think. And like he just has to do something on turn one. I mean that that's how this matchup works. And then game three, he's a huge underdog to win when Eric goes first. The game three is almost impossible. That this was his chance and it did not happen. Yeah. It, it was pretty close. I mean the Mulligan hand was I mean the problem was that out of all his action cards, Mind's Desire was by far the worst. Yes. A, pretty much yes. any other action card would have done something in that spot. And it was just Mind's Desire that didn't. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Yeah, he might have ley line of anticipation. Um, the whole plan behind that is, if the shops player goes first and casts turn one uh, Trinity Sphere or whatever, you can with ley line in play respond by casting all your artifact mana on your opponent's turn. So it doesn't like his uh, Eric's disruption doesn't stop the Moxes and whatever else you have. But that doesn't really do anything when you're playing first. Like he's not going to board that in. Uh... Hopefully the. Uh... Okay. All right, so let's see. So you did put in workshops, and that hand looks very nice. So he uh, can turn one workshop, Grim Monolith, Char Belcher, and then... And then, and then next turn he can, he can Char Belcher turn two, but he's going to have more lands in his deck. Well, he needs the workshop to survive. That's the bigger problem, which it, it's not surviving. There's a wasteland. Well, he'll he see needs... the wasteland at least. Yeah. But like he needs to draw any free mana. So if he draws a lotus, he wins turn one. I mean, yes. at least he almost wins turn one. Well, he has a tink. Oh, it's a windfall, not a tinker. Yeah, that's uh, uncastable. Yeah. Well, no. If he draws, yeah. a, if he draws a blue, a blue mox or lotus. That's a Hercules recall too, right? Yeah. Like, I, I'm not sure I like Hercules recall in this match. It's just like if the if the Belcher deck, uh, if the Chops deck gets going, I don't think you even get to cast it. Like having these reactive cards, and I, I think you just you just want to win. Like you just want to be completely suicidal. Forced to build that, however, that's the card. Yeah. So now Eric will have to decide: is he going to go for wasteland or go for a lock piece? Oh yeah. Ah, he might go for a lock piece because the Belcha doesn't get activated by the workshop, and I mean, there's only two Grim Monoliths in the deck. Right. That's that's the only card that, that's that's really good here. He but then if Randy it. keeps the hand, he has to expect something like that. Right. Like then that's... it needs to be. Yeah, I guess. Um... 
So Chalice does not help him here. No. He drew Chalice. He he just has the decision of, of am I going to play Wasteland or not. It's kind of tempting to lead with Workshop, cast Soul Ring into into a sphere. Right. And Randy or in, even Soul Ring into a Lodestone Golem. And, and Randy can't really make the, a mistake here because he saw his hand. And he knows he drew Chalice. And so now Randy knows the whole, the whole hand. I don't uh, think you force a will that, right? I mean... No, no. You, I mean, he knows he wins, right? As oh, long no. as he knows... Oh. That's a waste. He knows the Wasteland. How did, he doesn't know that well, he wins. Well, like he had to hope that the Wasteland isn't what he okay, wins. Okay, so now Randy doesn't even have that many outs because most of his artifact mana just costs zero. Right. Yeah, that's, well, he has to draw the he, he, he probably should have forced a will that now that I think about it. Like he knows the wasteland. And if that resolves, he he's never going to activate the the job archer. Right, but also it doesn't matter that much, I guess, because the fear of resistance is also preventing all the moxes from getting into play. Yeah, so we are forced of willing that obviously. But what can he even draw? Like a uh, spirit guide would be super nice draw. Well, Spirit Guide would do it, right? Spirit, yeah, Spirit Guide into Soul Ring, into Grim Monolith. Bam. Oh, Chalice for one. Oh, Chalice on one. Um, Sphere of Resistance, two. So now he's in... Chalice on one plus Sphere of Resistance is a big problem. Yeah. The Chalice also stops any Force of Will shenanigans. So. Like, yeah, this I've, is, this I've, is watched, the... I've watched Eric play this... Uh, Workshop deck quite a bit now. I don't think I've seen a single opening hand without a workshop yet. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. He did not play Chalice on one. He went for the Forge Master, huh? What do you think of yeah. that? Is that right? I um it gives like it gave Randy an opening to win. Like if he drew the spirit guide, he would have won that turn. Right, but that, but is Soul Ring the only card that, 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 oh. that matters there? No, I'm I'm on crack. Uh, with the sphere, obviously, that's not even enough. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, with it doesn't the sphere matter. Play, right? So he didn't, didn't have to do it. Yeah, and yeah. Then now it's just completely locked up, right? I mean. Yep. What does he even get? The, does he just get the Colossus end of turn? Like I don't know if he has it. He may not have it. Yeah. I think you have to. It doesn't really matter. Ah, oh, this was uh, sad to see this match happen this way. Randy was so close. Yeah. I just really hope that Randy's mentor deck can can beat Eric's old stack now. Because if this just ends 3-0, it would be pretty boring. Yeah. But yeah, this matchup was hugely favorable for Eric, so that was always the, the problem. Yeah. Yeah, like also the, if Eric doesn't draw Chalice there, I think he's likely to cast the the Lodestone Goal in turn one. Like yeah, Chalice yeah. was really like he had to on his first turn he had to do two things to stop Randy with the Force of Will and the land, and like drawing the Chalice there for a zero casting because that actually does something was pretty big. Yeah, although it would have taken Randy a turn, Randy would not have drawn anything. So the, the Chalice didn't actually end up mattering, I don't think. So what's he getting now? I mean, it doesn't seem to be the Infect 12-12 guy, because that would be in play already. Yeah, I doubt he has Blight. He just may not... He wouldn't leave Blight still in in this matchup. Right? Just a little single then. I mean, for this spot, it's pretty damn nice. But yeah, yeah. in this spot, doesn't matter. And now he drew a Metamorph, so he's just copying Lotus and Golem. So we have a Chalice on zero, Chalice on one, and two Lotus and Golems in play. Uh, Lotsong Golem is not as good in this match. I mean, it kills Randy next turn. Yeah. Which is pretty nice. It's the chalices. Yeah, like, that's exactly my problem. That's why I don't like Hercules Recall. Like, I just don't think it's a good sideboard. Like, I thought about it, and I was just like, I don't think it does enough. Well, Hercules Recall is actually good against decks that just, like, uh, like Merfolk, that just have no routes. Oh, yeah, 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 and then it's just, yeah, sure, like, if you have it in your sideboard against Nolrod, you also board it in here, obviously, because so, it does so something. The, the games, I actually won 
when I was practicing with, I won't, won't talk too long here because we're going to move next three. And I think, I don't know who's yeah. someone's taking it for me. But we're getting practice, kicked out. Like, right. we're just... When I was testing Belcher, I beat some Delver decks that had Null Rod because they did not have Wasteland into their deck. Yeah, but So like, eventually Chris, I was I'm, able to just get the Null Rod off play and win. I'm sorry, but we, we are just not interesting enough. So you're getting replaced by Luis and Tom now. Oh, Luis and Tom. Yeah. I guess, I guess those guys are interesting. Yeah, those guys are probably more interesting than we are. Plus, uh, you know, they, they've Luis has played the Mentor deck a bit, and I have not. So uh, <laughs> Luis has played say. every deck that has blue cards in it. Every single one. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, so I guess we are... Those guys are ready to tag in? Yeah. All right. I so. mean... It was fun, guys. Hopefully, uh, Randy is coming back now to win the third match, so we yeah, can get to see a fourth. Definitely rooting for Randy here in match three, at least. So then I'll, I'll withhold my roots till I find out what decks they choose for rounds four and five. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, see you guys around. Later.